there's a decent chance that you're going to be attending reInvent this year, or let's be perfectly honest, being sent to reInvent. Congratulations, but honestly, I'm just mostly sorry. Layoffs have been pernicious throughout tech for the past year or so. And a lot of that is making up for historically weak performance management. Even now, we still see a lot of weak management out there where instead of putting you on a pip, they just do the equivalent by making you go to reinvent. It's awful. There are so many things wrong with it. And if you are going to be attending reinvent and really don't want to, please reach out and call the number on your screen now. Help is available. Now, there are plenty of guides on how to do reinvent the right way that a bunch of people put out. And they all tend to get at least three things right across the board, and I would be remiss to not include them. The first is shoes. Make sure that you have comfortable shoes. I'll wear a suit with sneakers. Also, don't make the mistake that I made last year and get multiple pairs of the same model of shoe because they rub in the same place and blisters are no fun for anybody. You will walk 10 to 15 miles a day. Plan accordingly. Secondly, drink water. That's just plain good advice. If you take most of the influencer advice on water, you will become borderline aquatic, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be drinking water anyway, because this is a desert. And thirdly, you'd think I was sponsored by one of the companies selling it, but I swear I'm not. Use ChapStick. I wind up applying it every two hours at reInvent, set to a timer as if I have some sort of psychotic compulsion, because once your lips dry out, they don't ever get better for the rest of the trip. Remember, it's a desert, and you're going to be doing a lot of walking. Plan accordingly. The rest of the reInvent advice all distills down to a pile of marketing-aligned garbage from where I sit. So instead, I'm not gonna give you that advice. Rather, I'm going to give you the tips that I give to friends who reach out and tell me this is their first time at reInvent, what should they do? And they break down into a few different categories. Las Vegas, reInvent the conference itself, and of course, the nightlife. Let's dive in. It's obvious that this conference is hosted in Las Vegas, and that's no coincidence because AWS and Las Vegas both love to extract money by way of exploiting people who didn't know better the first time. It's an absolute treasure and a joy. On some level, you almost can view it through the lens of an AWS bill. There's no coincidence that reInvent venues themselves double as casinos because they are casinos. If you haven't been, you can imagine the layout of the casino floor in these hotels that you have to go through to get to the elevators as being extraordinarily complex. It's your AWS architecture diagram come to life. And everything you do there is built around upselling you to something else. You know, the AWS marketplace equivalent. You have a choice. Are you gonna be spending time in your room watching Netflix or are you going to be wandering the gaming floor? They have an incentive to get you to do one of those things. Therefore, it's one of the only cities in the United States where Wi-Fi in the room is still expensive. And it's worth it. Spring for the upgraded Wi-Fi. You're going to be spending more time in your room than you might hope to just because it's exhausting. Take time to recharge by yourself in your room. If your company is making you share your room with a coworker, beat the rush and quit because clearly they have a bulk deal with whatever employment law firm winds up handling their discrimination claims. Honestly, it's harassment, the musical. Beat the rush, get out early, find a better job. Now there are a bunch of hotels in Las Vegas, but I always recommend picking the one that is one of the conference venues. It's less walking for you and that becomes important when you realize that the maps are deceptive and threading your way through the casino to the exit, walking next door, threading your way through the casino into the conference area can be a 45 minute trip, assuming they're next door. Everything's further away than it looks. So what should you actually do with your time at reInvent when you're not relaxing in your hotel room? Not everything that AWS necessarily says you should. One year, I attempted to attend all of the keynotes and collapsed in the process. 
there are five different keynotes, each one of which is upward of two hours. That's 10 hours and change of unfiltered AWS marketing talking points. You can die from that much delusion injected into your life all at once. Don't do it. Remember, you're paying a lot of money to be here. It's your conference, and thus it's your choice about what you do. Act accordingly. Is it worth a 45 minute wait standing in line for a session that's going to be recorded on video and put up on YouTube before you get home? I have opinions on that. If you're going to attend a talk, buy us for chalk talks. Those are not recorded and they're given by experts, many of whom work at AWS, and because it's not recorded, they don't feel the all-seeing eye of humorless AWS PR and legal review on them quite as strongly, so they're going to be a lot more direct about what they're trying to get across. And some of the people you meet are just fantastic. It's worth remembering that the formal service announcements and the keynotes, these are marketing events start to finish. And marketing is one of those glorious things you decide when you pay attention to it. You don't have to go to all of them. And that's important. There are two pieces of advice to remember. The first is that not every service is for you because every service is for someone, but basically no service is for everyone except the bill. I do a roundup of what I find interesting every year at reInvent, but that is absolutely not your shopping list. And two, be very intentional around what it is you want to get out of reInvent when all is said and done. For me, I always viewed conferences as being about making connections to other people, talking to people in the hallway track about what you're working on and what they're working on. That's one of those moments where a 30 second conversation can save you months of going down the wrong path. I'm not exaggerating. My first conference experience was exactly that. And I didn't spend nearly as long toiling in the salt mines of open LDAP as I would otherwise. Also, when I was an employee, I found it a great opportunity to better assess other opportunities. What kind of work were other people doing? What were they being paid to do that? Did I still want to be where I was or did I want to go do something else? These days, I don't get to do any of that because I've done an excellent job of rendering myself absolutely unemployable for some odd reason. And you've got choices too. You can attend a talk about S3 or you can meet people who work on the S3 team. Only one of those seems likely to be able to answer my questions in six months when I'm trying to inappropriately use the service as a database. No one else is gonna give me that same horrified look as the person who built the service. And of course, remember, the vendors. There are thousands of companies all trying to sell you things at these events. The Expo Hall, or as I like to think of it, the Partner Re-Education Center is overwhelming as a result. There are hundreds upon hundreds of wildly expensive booths, and they're all there for one reason, to feed their first quarter sales pipeline for their company. I want to make it clear as well that there's a concern that I've had for a while that I figure is just a matter of time, and that is what's known as hospitality suites. An awful lot of conferences have vendors who will rent out a hotel room or a hotel suite. And what they'll do with it as a result is take meetings there with prospective customers. And people are one day going to message that poorly enough that someone thinks they're being propositioned and all hell is going to break loose. Let me be clear, they're very much trying to screw you. They're just not doing it in a way that violates the code of conduct for the conference. So make sure that the context is understood if you're on either side of that conversation. Let's talk for a minute about swag, or as I equate it in my head, garbage. There are a bunch of options, none of them good. Stickers, they were fun for a while, but there's so many of them now that I long ago ran out of trapper keepers to put them on because it turns out, despite how I act, I am in fact not 12 years old anymore. T-shirts, great. A lot of them are scratchy and made by the lowest bidder, which is always a great fit. For a while, everyone got really into socks, which I can only assume was somebody's fetish or something, but I have plenty of them at this point. But my least favorite version of swag is clearly the USB batteries that they give you to charge your phone. Because a battery's failure mode resembles a small to mid-size fire, and while I appreciate wanting to put your corporate logo everywhere, 
I can't really see my way clear towards having it be front and center in the pictures the fire marshal takes when someone's house burns down. People go nuts over swag. They'll do things that completely devalue their own time. I've seen people wait in line for 45 minutes for a chance to win a drone that would cost $20 on Amazon and then probably not work. Remember, your time has value. There's a reason companies are giving these things away. reInvent has a pub crawl, which they're now rebranding as restaurant receptions because, you know, openly endorsing binge drinking is apparently something that a grown-up they finally hired in AWS marketing realized might not be a great idea. But this aligns around their ideal buying persona for an awful lot of these companies. Someone with signing authority who is absolutely blasted and has terribly poor judgment as a result. You don't want to have that kind of regret the next day when you realize exactly what you just did to next year's budget. So don't drink too much at these things. In fact, I went a couple of reinvents without drinking anything at all, and I still was hung over by day three because that's Las Vegas. The humidity, the dryness, the altitude, the constant walking, and the constant exposure to the re radioactivity that is marketing statements that are incredibly inane all take their toll. But the key central point of the nightlife that they talk up every year is replay, which is an EDM concert that they have some random person headline. They have thousands of people in multiple tents with food that was set out hours ago and has grown cold. You have to go into this whole thing through a security pen. You're not allowed to bring a bag. The security people have zero sense of humor. And I realized the secret to this last year as I was trying to find some people I knew were there but couldn't because it was disorganized and impossible to move around. And my, re my revelation was this, I'm Corey Quinn. I don't have to be here if I don't want to. So I didn't. I went back to my hotel room and I recommend you do that too. Read a book, take a bath, read a book in the bath. I don't care. Have a sedate dinner with friends in the bath. I don't care. Just don't go to replay if you're not into it. If you are, why are you watching this video instead of doof, 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 doof on loop for 10 hours? But I've saved the best part of reInvent, just like they do, for last. And that is going home. Because you are free to leave at any time. It is the only AWS service that does not charge you on your way out the door. When you've had enough, just go on home. Be free. Enjoy your life pamper yourself, get a massage, do something else. Me, I can't do that. I'm there for eight nights every year because I turn it into the worst form of shitty cloud Hanukkah. I hope that you don't have to go. But if you do, I hope to see you there. And this year, to make it a little bit more fun for folks who are either there in person or simply in spirit, I'm going to be running my own version of a photo scavenger hunt. Stay tuned. There's more to come, and I hope to see you there if you're unfortunate enough to be dispatched to reinvent this November.